What's going on YouTube family? Today we're gonna to be talking about what the automotive market is gonna look like under Trump. Now whether you're left or you're right, that's okay, difference of opinions. At the end of the day, we're all Americans and it's Veterans Day. So let's be more patriotic than political and let's get into the video. So I've been gone for a little bit because I was busy with SEMA. If you guys didn't know, I built a two door, 2JZ swap Tesla Model 3. It was a big hit at SEMA, had tons of interviews. It was a great thing. I think we got over 10 million views across multiple platforms. If you haven't seen those build videos, definitely go back and check them out. I pretty much wanna do everything in the automotive industry, whether it's talking about business, finance, dealership licensing, or actually building a car. We wanna do it all. Those videos don't get as much love, so if you guys can go back and check it out, I truly appreciate it. So let's go ahead and talk about all the things I've seen change in the automotive industry since Trump was elected. Now, Typically when there's a changing of guard, whether it's Republican to Democrat, Democrat to Republican, banks tend to basically pull their purse strings, stop lending, and wait to see what happens and let the dust settle. Now, typically when it's a Republican candidate, banks tend to feel more freely when it comes to lending. They figure that that particular party is more pro-business and so they tend to lend a little bit more. But the exact opposite happened when Trump was first elected. I guess they didn't realize or feel like he, if he knew what he was doing, so they were a little bit skittish. But now in his second term, it's a complete 180. Banks have basically rolled out the red carpet. I've talked to numerous bankers in different states with different types of lending programs, and they're all saying the exact same thing, that they're gonna go back to lending like they were in 2019. Now this is a good thing and a bad thing. Some of the banks talked about lowering interest, some talked about bringing back 84 month financing, you know, and these are some of the things I know we need because new cars are so expensive and people can't afford them. But at the end of the day, changing the financing really won't help Americans purchase cars because, you know, obviously inflation is ridiculous, Car insurance has doubled, if not tripled in your area. The price of cars have gone up 35%. So a lot of things need to change now. It's great that lending is coming back because we really talked about the credit crunch affecting most Americans. Now, I'm one of these people that believe that once you take credit away from Americans, watch how fast our economy slows down. And sure enough, it's been happening little by little. You've heard businesses get their lines of credit cut. You've heard other people like their credit cards have been shut off or closed or something else. Even my Discover card, I haven't used it in a year, but they actually closed my Discover card because I was not using it. So I think they're doing as much as they can to prepare for the fallout because they know that there's going to be a recession. They just don't know how bad it's going to be. Now that there is a Republican candidate that's in office, I think banks are breathing a little bit easier knowing that there's somebody in there that's basically pro-business. Now, I talked about it for quite some time that I had a bad feeling that the government was gonna go after a lot of automotive banks because they were doing predatory lending or something else, but that wasn't really the fact. The fact was, is that most Americans have this victim mentality where, oh, I was taken advantage of, they sold me a car that was worth double or triple and now I have to pay for it. I shouldn't have to, you should give me some sort of forbearance or forgiveness. And that's exactly what I didn't want to happen. I didn't want to make everybody that was so stupid to go out and buy cars at 200% of LTV, basically a victim and taken advantage of by dealerships. They were gonna put on this witch hunt to go after dealers and to go after bankers to basically set them up where pretty soon the way you would buy a car is the way you would basically buy a house. You had to be pre-qualified. You can only get a certain loan for how much money you make. And so I knew that if that happened, majority of Americans would not be able to afford the cars that they're currently driving. Majority of Americans would be driving either a Hyundai or a Kia around because if you're making $45,000 a year, you can't buy that $65,000 Mustang. And so I'm kind of glad that this is kind of going away. I don't know if it's gonna go away all the way because like I said, a lot of people are walking away from their auto loans. And so I wanna see how the new party is gonna deal with that. But as far as what I can tell, bankers seem to be ecstatic that you know there, there's a Republican candidate in there and they're actually pushing forward with more lending criteria. I even talked to a bank where they're actually gonna be opening up their subprime division even more because they believe that the economy is going to get better. Therefore, they're willing to take a risk when it comes to subprime market. So it's pretty amazing how when you go from one party to another, how some of these bankers feel and how these banks are actually lending. This just shows that how the market is constantly changing changing and evolving, this is what you need to pay attention to. Now, a lot of dealers and a lot of bankers always tend to do the exact same thing over and over again, but a lot of these bigger banks tend to set the trends when it comes to following what's happening in the political atmosphere, what's happening with the economy. And usually, like I tell everybody, banks are always trying to offset their risk. So whatever they gotta do to basically offset the risk as much
much as they possibly can so they can come out ahead, that's what they're gonna do. Whether it's lowering them out financed, getting bigger down payments, or just stop lending period, which is pretty much happening right now. But hopefully, fingers crossed, they get back to lending and everyone can go out and get the cars that they really want and hopefully not get themselves absolutely in debt. Now, I wanna talk about the EV initiative. Now, so many people were crying about this and screaming about it, like you can't force people to get into EVs, which I think is true. Nobody should be forced to buy a car that they really don't want. I still think that we're probably about 50 years away from going about 50% EV. We're not even close. The infrastructure's not even set up. If even 20% of Americans went to EV right now and you lived in California, guaranteed you would have blackouts everywhere. There's not enough infrastructure to support that many cars on electricity. But now that Trump is in there, I don't think that they're actually gonna do this. I think they're gonna go ahead and walk it back. There's been multiple discussions about saying it was the wrong way to do it. They're pushing this. So many of these companies were actually losing millions of dollars every single quarter because you know they have to put out cars that they're losing money on. Now Tesla is one of the few auto manufacturers that actually makes a profit when it sells an EV. Ford, Chevy, Honda, Toyota, they're basically 10 years behind, so they're trying to catch up. So every time they would sell like one of these Mach-E's, I think they were losing 10 to, to $25,000 per vehicle. Now, what happens when most Americans have maybe Ford in their retirement? GM, some other stock from an automotive manufacturer, every time they show a, uh, show a losing quarter, now it's affecting their bottom dollar, their retirement fund, and you can see how to this kind of system just basically pulls down the average American even more. So hopefully they're gonna push this off for a few years. They're just gonna let natural innovation happen. And I think when you don't rush it and other manufacturers can kind of work together and start selling parts, because I don't know if most of you guys know this, Every time you see a car, like even like a Nissan, you know, the body may be made in Canada, Mexico, and America. The motor may be assembled in America or Mexico, and then half the parts are put together from Japan, sent over here. So most cars that are manufactured today are not manufactured in one place. I believe China is one of the only few places that doesn't like to send a lot of their stuff out. They try to keep everything in there. And because of multiple companies working together, eventually somebody's gonna create a new battery, a drive system that's better than the rest, that pretty soon everybody's gonna be buying that and putting it in their cars. Just like Getrag for uh, transmissions, you can find them in American cars, Japanese cars, German cars. Um, same thing with a lot of the CVT trainings, even though they suck, you can find them in all different makes and models, even though they're made by two or three companies. So I think sharing this technology as we move forward is actually going to help the EV market and help bring back price or bring down prices. Also keeping on the EV topic is the actual Chinese EVs. Now they have tons of EVs that you can purchase for under $10,000 brand new that will give you about 150 to 200 miles of range, which I think is a great deal because Americans need cheap, affordable cars. But America is so afraid to let those cars in because they have a feeling they will absolutely decimate all these automotive manufacturers that they won't be able to keep up. I'm kind of on the edge. I think they should let some of them in and you can hit them with a, a tariff and charge them a few bucks, whatever, that's fine. I think the 200% tariffs is a little rough because most Americans are not gonna wanna buy cheap, cheap cars. They're still wanna gonna buy SUVs and trucks, which American companies make, so that'll be fine. The only thing I would do is I would force China to open up a manufacturing plant here to hire Americans to build this stuff, just like Toyota does with trucks and some of these other things. You know, build them here, use some of their technology, because I guarantee you, if that stuff starts showing up here, it's gonna help American companies figure out how to make a more cheaper EV as well. And like I said, now that the EV mandate is not there, don't think of it as competition. Think of it as an opportunity to learn. Now, China steals a bunch of our tech, let's might as well steal a little bit of theirs and figure out what we can do to make more affordable, cheaper EVs on top of that cheaper cars. Because remember, you cannot buy a single new car in the United States for under, I believe it was like $23,000. Everything is like $23,000 and above. And that's like bottom baseline, no frills, probably crank windows and stuff like that, which is absolutely insane. So all these college kids coming out of school with massive amounts of debt can't even buy a new car. They have to buy something used, which it's even harder to get used, which you get higher interest rates, so it just kind of becomes unproductive. That's why I think bringing affordable Chinese EVs in, as long as they maybe build them in Mexico or America, 
might help and hopefully we can share manufacturing processes with them to bring our own costs down and hopefully little by little the ev market will balance out now i think in about 20 to 30 years it will be cheaper to manufacture an ev than a regular car it's just like electronics remember when you guys paid 300 dollars for a sony disman it was the coolest thing now you can go buy these things for like 10 bucks on amazon you can't buy them in stores anymore i haven't seen them but electronics have gotten so cheap it's ridiculous so i think that's the way evs are going but until then we still have to figure out what we're going to do and i think with trump being president he's going to put those tariffs on china which will hurt that and slow down a little bit but i'm hoping that they'll cause more innovation and force you know these other country manufacturing plants to open up here in the united states hire more americans and get more people on the road with more affordable cars because at the end of the day somebody needs to make more cars i don't know why every manufacturer and i'm sure you guys have seen the news Ford, GM, um, I think it was Honda, Toyota. They all said the same thing. They would rather make less cars and make more margin than make more cars and make less. So if they're just gonna make a bunch of high dollar, high uh, accessory vehicles, what about the average American? The average American cannot even afford the average new car, which is insane. And especially like I have some friends in construction, the average new truck is $60,000 for a truck for something you're gonna to throw tools in and beat the hell out of, they want $60,000. And I think used car truck prices are gonna dip a little bit, but once gas goes down, I think you're gonna see a big spike in all these trucks coming. So it'll be great that, you know, if the Republican party and Trump actually bring gas down, but I think you're gonna see car prices when it comes to trucks and SUVs go up because now people can afford gas and they'll start buying these things even more. So it's always a balancing act when it comes to either you know left or right or whoever was elected. But I just wanted to share this because I thought this was kind of funny. I just thought it was interesting to see how banks basically do 180s depending on which party was picked. And so it's kind of neat to see how this is all unfolding. Also, remember, let's keep this patriotic, not political. It's Veterans Day. If you or your friends or family served, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. If you know any veterans, thank them for their sacrifice because we wouldn't have the freedoms we would have without them. And like I said, it's all about being American. Also to my friends in Canada, Australia, and the UK, thank you guys so much for watching the channel. We also support you. And uh, happy Veterans Day to your veterans because we've all fought in the same wars. And I want to thank you guys so much again. Like I said, let's go ahead and move forward. Keep things positive for 2025. And we'll see you next video.